Hey guys, it's Kevin again, this is going to be for the Foster Season 2, Episode 8, Girls Reunited, and I'm hearing a lot of people say this was like the best episode of the show, I mean, I kind of agree, I mean, it was definitely up there, it was one of the best episodes by far, it really showed, um, you know, the maturity in Callie, how far Callie has come over the year, I mean, really, this episode was absolutely fantastic, in my opinion, I really enjoyed it. I thought there was some great stuff in this episode. Um, it was good to see the Girls United home again. I really enjoyed seeing that because Girls United last year was one of my favorite parts of season one. I mean, very interesting. We really got a lot of more interesting characters with that, and I was happy they did that last year. And I was I was glad to see it brought back. I hope they do this a lot. Like they go back to the Girls United home. I don't know, but we'll see in the you know in the next um you know in maybe the second half of the season. I don't know. But basically, let's just get this episode. We'll first talk about Callie. Now, Callie returned to um, Girls United because she wanted to catch up with some of her old friends. However, her visit is very fraught with difficulties. For one, it's very hard hearing about her life with both her foster family and our biological family. And it's especially hard on those who don't have a family, like Kiara. Um, her potential foster family pulled out on having her at the last minute. And soon her time in the group home will be up, so her future is looking pretty bleak. So, unfortunately, that's really sad. Um, that's why she doesn't want to hear um, that Callie would, wouldn't go to live with her biological family even if they begged. It makes, and it makes Callie sound very ungrateful. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was definitely very interesting. So, while Callie is um, spending time in the house... There are other things going on, which we'll talk about, but, um, um, you know, then what ends, what ends up happening, though, is Callie ends up not really enjoying herself here. She really did not enjoy herself, and honestly, I don't blame her. I mean, it really was not her fault what was going on. Um, basically, it's, in short, the Girls United is not a safe place anymore because, um, the new girl there has a problem with her and their certain neighbor. Um, there's this neighbor doing his best to do whatever he can to close down the house, and he feels like all the girls inside are thugs and wants them out of the neighborhood, so Rita came up with the idea to host an open house specifically targeted towards getting the other neighbors to see how good they've actually been doing, because they are doing pretty well, I mean, they're, they're doing pretty well, I mean, definitely, I thought that was a good idea. So, the event somehow turned into probing of Callie as its spokesperson, and some of the girls didn't take it kindly, didn't take too kindly at that. It made them feel like she was, um, you know, supposed to be, like, this big celebrity. And, um, Becca, for example, there was, like, Becca, whose mother always wants to put her well-being on the back burner whenever there's a new guy in the picture. And then, of course, there's Cole. Um, Cole, I thought was very interesting this episode. You know, he, of course, he is transgender. Everyone still thinks of him as a girl, but, of course, he's a guy. And he thought that this new girl loved him for him, when the truth is she was merely using him. She wanted to manipulate Cole's feelings for in order to get him to take her to meet up with a real boyfriend, thereby breaking Cole's heart in the process when he learned the truth. I thought that was definitely very sad. I felt very bad for Cole in that scene, definitely. I really did. So, you know, Cole really wants to be treated like a man. You know, he's tired of being called a girl. He's just, he's tired of it. So, she tells, um, basically, um, you know, she's his friend and she's also Becca's friend. However, Becca didn't remember that part after her mom had told her she found a new man. So, Becca fell back on some of her old destructive behavior. She started playing with matches again, and one of them caused this huge fire to happen. I mean, it caused a huge fire. So, Becca and Rita both turned back to her. They were nearly injured in the fire, though Callie managed to come to the rescue. And later, the other girls started hip, um, hypothizing um, what Becca was doing down there. Um, you know, they were they were sort of, like, um, hypothizing. And, um... Um, I mean, hypothesizing, and basically they came to the conclusion that Becca was doing drugs before the new girl left. So she accused Callie of stealing her drugs, even though she didn't. So it wasn't so if it wasn't any of them, it had to have been Becca. Um, now the fire could have very well. So basically, there's like this huge fire that starts, and it couldn't destroy any chances of um, house reopening. 
they're pretty sure it's the guy next door, you know, that it's that landlord next door, so... Rita says that that landlord won't meet, won't want to give them second chance after fire. So the girls are being sent back to juvie, unfortunately. But I really like this next scene. I thought it was definitely very good. Um, definitely, I really enjoyed this. Callie and Rita then have this talk. And um, Rita talks to Callie and tells her that she's doing very well, how far she's come. That she really is an inspiring story, you know. She got her life together, and that's what the girls need to do. So, you know, Callie's not self-destructive anymore, and, you know, Rita tells her that she's doing very well, and I really like this scene because Rita's very much a second mother to her. I mean, she's, well, was, she was with her for a couple months, and I just love the connection that Callie and Rita have, really. I, I was very happy about the connection that the two of them have, and I thought that was definitely a very good scene. And uh, overall, I really enjoyed the main plot. I thought it was definitely very interesting, and uh, I definitely really enjoyed it. So yeah, Callie and Jude's plot, really enjoyed it. And the other thing I talk about, let's go to, um, uh, by the way, Steph comes to pick her up. So yeah, that happened. Um, so let's talk about Steph. Um, Steph. So basically, Jude and Lena, they're away enjoying themselves, which unfortunately, Steph um, in charge. So Steph is the tough parent. And that means she really shouldn't parent on her own. Um, because uh, here's the thing with, uh, with, um, with Steph doing this. Steph really, um, you know, Luna was in one scene this entire episode. Honestly, I, I thought that was fine that that happened. But Steph is the toughest parent, so that means she really shouldn't parent on her own. Because Brandon wouldn't want to discuss his current situation with only her, and, and Jesus surely doesn't want to discuss his sex life with the parent, most likely to grow him by protection. So Steph is on her own, and her kids have taken to hiding in their rooms. So, the only thing that's really going on, though, is Mariana and Jesus. They are in this um, very weird adult dinner. You know, Mariana made this very weird adult dinner. Invited Jesus, made a double date with Haley and her own date. And um, the date nearly ended in disaster because Jesus made a joke about their birth mom. And Mariana had told Haley that she doesn't remember the woman. And, when, and so when she found out this was a lie, Haley accused Mariana of lying to her. Honestly, I agreed with Haley here, definitely, but, um, Mariana hit back. She reminded Haley that they both knew about her parents' divorce for months, yet the other girl made it seem like recent news when she tried to stop Jesus from going to a team dinner with Emma, and Haley immediately got defensive, stormed off, and Jesus followed her, blaming the fight entirely on his sister. However, it didn't end up, uh, Mariana's chances of being with a new guy because they did end up kissing, so I thought that was good. But... Haley's temper tantrum didn't hurt uh, Mariana's chance. So, yeah, um, it didn't hurt her chance of being with a new guy. Um, so, yeah, everything seems like it, it went okay there. I mean, it seems like her and Jesus are still on a good path, at least, so that's what matters. And um, I guess the last thing we'll talk about is uh, Brandon's date with that girl. I really like this girl in his band. I can't remember her name right now, but I really like this girl. I think she's a, a nice girl and everything. I really like that scene where they were listening to Brandon's music. I really enjoyed that overall. I thought that was definitely a really good scene. Um, definitely very much enjoyed that. thought that was very, very well done. One of the things I really liked about that specific scene um, was just they're getting close very well, you know. It, it was nice to see him actually um, with someone more romantically other than Callie and, and Talia, of course. I don't like Talia at all, but... um. I really enjoyed that, definitely. I thought that was definitely very, very well done. I, I really, really enjoyed that scene. I thought it was definitely really, really good, in my opinion. Um, now, is there anything else to talk about? I'm trying to remember. I feel like there is, but I don't know. Um... Oh, this... Oh, yeah, I forgot this part. Steph did receive a letter from, uh, from Anna... Asking to make amends with the twins, and by the end of the episode, it seems like Steph is, pops is possibly considering it. Um, you know, because she's looking at that note, and I'm thinking, what's, here's what's happening. She is thinking if she was like Anna, you know, if she was like Anna, would she do the same thing? Personally, if I saw a note like that, I probably would have had sympathy as well. You know, if I was like Steph, and I had a note like that, I would have sympathy as well for her, because, you know, she's a parent, she really wants her kids, you know... She's a parent and things like that, so I could definitely, um, uh, see that definitely. I could definitely, so yeah, I could definitely see that. Um, 
So, yeah, I'm really interested in seeing um, what's going to happen on the, on the next episode. Now, let me ask you guys a couple questions. Do you think we're going to see the girls reunite at home again? I really don't know. I mean, it was burned down, so I really don't know what's going to happen there. Um, also, what's going to happen with... Um, with Seth, I do think she's going to give Anna a chance with that letter. Um, you know, I do think she's going to make amends with the with Mariana and Jesus. Um, and pretty much everyone but Jesus realized that Haley's manipulating him. So, um, is, is Jesus going to realize that really soon? Because Haley's basically just... She, she's got Jesus wrapped around her finger. I said this. I mean, she's got him wrapped around her finger and just... Seriously, wow. Um... Also, what do you think of Lou and Brandon? I really like Lou and Brandon. I thought, you know, Lou and Brandon, I like them together. It looks like next week, though, we're going to go back to the whole Callie-Brandon storyline and the whole thing with Callie and Brandon possibly being together. You know, is she going to choose Brandon or Wyatt? I'm really not looking forward to that. I don't really care. This episode was pretty much filler, but it was still a really good episode because it really shows how far Callie has come, and I really enjoyed that about this episode. But that's it for my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys in my next video, which will be my review for Teen Wolf. So I'll see you after that. Okay, bye.